The next step is to configure the quote unquote real data mover. Now what do I mean by this? If you take a look at the diagrams earlier up on the blog post, you'll see that the Solera has got management interfaces and then it has basically the data interfaces that are used for both NAS and for iSCSI as well as for replication. So they're entitled CGE0 and CGE1. The naming just stands for Copper Gigabit Ethernet because the Solera can support uh, you know, non-copper optical interfaces as well as 10 gigabit Ethernet interfaces and those sorts of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure the IP addresses as well as configure the initial iSCSI target. So earlier on, you remember how we assigned ETH0 and ETH1 to map to interfaces? Let me show you what those really refer to now. So I just clicked on the network on the on the tree on the left and that brings up this network dialog. Now you can see that there's four here and it's just because in an earlier step I had already configured CEG, uh, CGE 0 and 1 so I'm just going to delete them so it looks like it's a naked uh, unconfigured Solaris sim. So let's just delete those interfaces. You'll notice that there's also two EL interfaces. Those are basically the loopback interfaces that don't actually connect anything in the outside world here. They're just connecting the control station to the data mover. The control station in the architecture of a Solera is essentially an out-of-band management interface. Um, again, you can think of it architecturally kind of like a ESX server in the sense that you know there's the service console that's separate from the VM kernel. Um, so let's delete that or alternatively another host that's running the remote CLI tool as an example. So boom, we've just deleted all those interfaces and we've come back to the state you know, as, as uh, same as your OVF that you just imported and have configured through the earlier steps. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the specific network interfaces with our particular IP address config. So I'm just going to scroll down, I'm going to hit new. And then I'm going to configure, first of all, CGE0. Just as a reminder, in my particular case, this is the interface that's connected to my quote-unquote LAN-based vSwitch. So I'm going to give an IP address, which in this case is 192.168.1.100. It can't be the same one that you configured for ETH2. So you can see now why I use .99 for ETH0 ETH and why I'm using .100 for C CGE0, even though they bind to the same physical interface. You'll notice that you could have given it a name, a specific MTU if you want to use jumbo frames, and a specific VLAN if you're using VLANs. Now, once this is done, we're going to do the same thing for CGE1. Now, again, in my case, this maps to ETH1 because I changed that mapping earlier and it corresponds to my iSCSI vSwitch. So let's give it a specific IP address. You'll notice of course that you need to switch it. One thing that's cool is you can of course have multiple interfaces that are mapped to a single device on different VLANs. A lot of uh, IP addressing and configuration customization that you could do uh, both with the Solera simulator and with a real Solera. One thing that I will highlight is once again this step with a real Solera is all done automatically with the Solera startup assistance so um, you know you don't even need to do this manually. Okay, fantastic. We now have got two network interfaces. You can see their names. If I go to properties, you can see their details. And their network state. So, boom, in the properties. One thing I'm just correcting here is I mistype the net mask. So in my particular case, um, you know, I'm using a, a class B as opposed to a class C on the 192.168. The other thing that's useful to highlight here is you can go in afterwards and correct any mistakes that you've made.
Okie dokie. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to configure an iSCSI, um, an iSCSI target. Now, one thing that's neat about the Solera is that it can actually do tasks that take longer, and it'll still do a quick refresh of the GUI. So you can see here that that particular operation was still running when the GUI did a refresh. So you can have a whole bunch of tasks that are queued and operating, um, and the management up interface updates asynchronously. Now, these wizards can be used for a lot of cool steps and make it simple and easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to use the wizard to create a new iSCSI target. So we'll just click on the wizard. In a few moments, you'll notice the wizard uh, pop up on the screen. The wizard just guides you step by step through the configuration. So we're going to configure an iSCSI target on server number two. We're going to give it a name. By the way, what is an iSCSI target? An iSCSI target is an iSCSI endpoint that could map to a single LUN or you could have multiple LUNs presented behind it. Different configurations work best with different scenarios. Again, one thing that's very useful is the Solera can operate in multitude of ways. So you could have a single target with hundreds or thousands of LUNs or you could have thousands of targets if that's what works for you. So here let's give it a name. So for, in this case, CS prod or production target number one. And you'll notice that underneath it says auto generate. That will generate an IQN or iSCSI qualified name conforming to the iSCSI uh, IETF draft uh, requirements. You map it to and you know give it a portal, meaning an IP address that it's going to get uh, executed on. And then one thing that's very neat about the wizards is it summarizes what it's going to do and then you say go. So there we go. We've configured that iSCSI target. And now our Solera is ready to start presenting iSCSI LUNs.